Lynn, can you share with us the story behind founding Our Lessons Learned? Our Lessons Learned was a personal story. My son went to college in South Carolina. On a Friday evening, he called me and says, come pick me up, I've been arrested. 7 p.m., I knew no one there, seven hours away from home. Oh, wow. Who was I gonna call? What was I gonna do? It was a debacle. I was traumatized. I was frantic. My anxiety was all over the place. I got to South Carolina. I had to be there by eight o'clock the next morning because he was going to meet with the magistrate. I got there, I do, knew nothing about the legal system. I could not bring him home. I never wanted another parent to go through what I went through. So from my personal experience, that's how this came about. What observations besides your personal story has inspired you to focus on supporting families and caregivers of the incarcerated? It's very important for caregivers um, and the loved ones of the incarcerated to stay connected through this whole entirety of what they have to go through. Family support is one of the most important things because it will also help them on the transition after this is over. The love they need, they need that emotional support. It's also a financial strain on the caregivers as well as parenting issues and things of that nature. So it's important to support that caregiver of the recently arrested. How has Our Lessons Learned evolved since its inception, and what services are you currently providing? We are called the connectors. If your loved one is arrested, what we do, you call us. We will connect you first with prayer, then with mental health to bring down the anxiety and the trauma. After that, we're going to connect you with legal advice. If a bond has been set, we also have preferred bail bondsmen. That way, you're not left in the dark. We will try to guide you through what's going on. When something happens, the who, what, when, where, those are questions that we can help answer. And that kind of can ease the loved one through the transition. Can you talk about the importance of caregiver support within the criminal justice system and how it promotes fairness and community advocacy? That is very important. It is not unusual for the caregivers to become angry at the situation. A lot of the caregivers also are left to raise the children if their loved one is incarcerated. The emotional impact of incarceration on caregivers, um, you know, they struggle trying to figure out how to navigate through these new challenges. I'm a licensed mental health counselor, so I like to help them through that emotional turmoil. And we have been very successful. We also have a Facebook Live that we do every other Monday, supporting the family members along the journey. And it is a journey. So we try to help them heal along the journey. That way they can continue to give love and support to the incarcerated. Do you have any success stories that you would like to share with us? Yes, we do. We have a couple of success stories. We have been able to assist a couple of people who were just left with the impact of maybe their uh, loved one getting life in prison. We've also been able to help a family member whose husband was taken away from the children, and now she's left with single parenting. We've also been able to help a grandmother who now has to raise a child in her later years, we've been able to support them with community resources. There are so many community resources that people don't know about. So that has been one way that we have been able to help. You mentioned some of the, the help that you provide through the different stages. Mm -hmm. um, what challenges do you face when it comes to the criminal justice system? Well, it, it, it's basically a lack of knowledge. You don't know what, what's next. You don't know the laws, the rules. You don't know whether to take a plea deal. There's so much going on. So by us having a preferred legal team, that way they can give them the best knowledgeable answer from their expertise. Also, we've been through it, so we can kind of advise them on this is happening now, this means that, and give them that knowledge base. And that has been very, very helpful. Also to instill hope. We also partner with Florida Restorative Justice because all the time you don't have to go through incarceration. Florida Restorative Justice, their program works is that they sit down with the parents and sometimes they can come to a deal to avoid incarceration. The average person 
doesn't know that. I didn't know that before I started our lessons learned. So partnering with community-based programs, it really helps me with my knowledge as well so I can give that to the loved ones of the incarcerated. You mentioned some of the work that you do with other organizations out there. Are there any others that you work with or local governments to create a support network? Sure. We work with the City of Orlando Parks and Recreations, Christopher Wallace. Uh, we do certain things um, like we will have fundraisers and it's come out a community event where we have the food trucks out and we had vendors out and we work with other um, ministries, jail ministries, and uh, we work with church groups and things of that nature to just, you know, get the exposure. We want to be a household name. If something happens, OLL. We are trying to partner now with UCF and with uh, Rollins College. So that way we can help the loved ones of the incarcerated. For instance, say that you have sent your loved one here for college and they get arrested. What are you going to do? You could be in Boston or New York. Call us. We will assist you and guide you and connect you. And I think it's good to know before it happens. Right? Yes, exactly. For our audience who might be interested in getting involved, could you share ways they can volunteer or support your organization? I like the word Ebenezer. Ebenezer is a stone of help. And there are so many opportunities to come out and help us when we do our community events to get our name out there, OLL. We partner with a lot of other events like back to school events and things like that just to get the name out there. We also uh, need administrative help. We also need volunteers when we do do our community events. We're a nonprofit. So you can, you know, if you work in a hotel or something like that, let us know. A restaurant, maybe you can give a loved one a free meal who has come here and doesn't know anyone here. So those are the things that we're looking for. Are there any upcoming events or projects that you'd like to highlight where community members can participate or contribute? Sure. At Christmas time, we do an art auction. It's live and it's online. And the proceeds go to help OLL. We also do a race every year in Winter Park. And it's the second Saturday in January. So just look on social media and we'll be able to advertise that shortly. And get involved with us. Come out and meet other people in the community. And that's very important because as we help people, we're helping the community. What are your future goals? Well, our future goals are to expand our lessons learned. We want to expand it into the colleges. We also want to expand it all the way through the South. We want this to be a national organization. Why can't it be? Mm -hmm. We're helping the states because, you know, incarceration is an impact for the state on their budget and resources and things of that nature. We also want to partner with the Sheriff's Department, the Police Department, the commissioners such as yourself to help the state and connect together. Yes, definitely. We want everyone to be um, contributors to the community yes. and you can't do that while you're sitting in jail. Yes, that's right. So it's great to have them out there contributing rather than being incarcerated. That's right. Where do you see your organization in the next five years? Next five years, South Carolina, all the way in the South, New Orleans, other Southern states, definitely Georgia, and helping with really having rehabilitation in the prison systems. Mm -hmm. Most of those prisons are state owned. So the rehabilitation, is it really there? You know, we've been doing some research. So we would like to partner with some of those prison systems. Some of those states like Columbia is the headquarters for the prisons in South Carolina and really focus more on mental health counseling, focus more on rehabilitation, focus more on job skills, help them focus more on mental health and things of that nature. That is really needed. And also bringing education into the prison systems. Recidivism is high because when they come out, they can't get jobs, they can't vote, they can't do certain things. So it's time for change all the way around. Social justice change reinventing a system. What message would you like to share with families who are currently navigating the criminal justice system and with our viewers who may want to help make a difference? Never give up hope. Hope is one thing. I'm a person of great faith. I pray a lot. Hope is very important to give a family member. Don't give up on your loved one. Love is unconditional. That family member needs you. So please do that. Call us. Let us know how you can help our organization. 
you may have some resources that we don't even know about that could help us. We plan on expanding to have like weekends where the loved one comes out to get them back with their families. So please call us with your resources and we'll let you know how you can fit in with the connectors. I'm going to do a quick rapid fire round of questions uh -huh. to raise awareness and understanding about incarceration and caregiving. Mm -hmm. In one word, describe the emotional journey of a caregiver. Mm. Traumatizing. How can listeners get involved to support your organization's mission? Follow us on our Facebook Live. We would love for you to join us. We have people that are working in social justice. They are special guests. So if you have some special knowledge of the incarceration system, social justice, please get in touch with us. We'd love to have you on our show so you can help the community and enlighten our viewers. Mm -hmm. Can you describe the initial feelings and emotions caregivers might experience upon encountering law enforcement? You don't know whether to talk. We have the four D's of discipline. Don't talk, don't sign, don't make a deal, don't consent to a search. And that's very important. You know, you're traumatized. You're full of stress and anxiety. You don't know what to do. You're in shock. So the first thing is to please let your loved one know, don't give up your rights. You have a Fifth Amendment and a Sixth Amendment. Make sure your Miranda rights are read to you. Things of that nature. There's so much to learn about this system. So partnering with us, we can help you and we can educate you on those things. What's a message you'd like to convey to our listeners about the value of understanding and supporting families in these situations? Your journey is manageable. We can show you how because we support you. And that is the one thing you need. Sometimes your friends don't understand. They haven't been there, but we have. So it's nothing like being with a person who's already on the journey and we can pull you along. And that is very important. I had Lee, my uh, co-founder, she pulled me along. I had never been there. So I wouldn't have made it without her help and her support. So that was important. It's also a time for families to pull together. You know, the judgment and everything, that's not the time. Pull together, support each other. How can society better understand and acknowledge the important role caregivers play in the lives of incarcerated individuals? You know, uh, I think society needs to realize that this is a very hard thing for the caregivers as before. There are financial strains, there are emotional strains, as well as parenting strains. You know, think about a child who has to go to school and it could have been on the news that their parent is incarcerated. So, you know, society can help and embrace, embrace each other, support one another. And that is very important when you're in that role. What's the ultimate goal you hope to achieve through the work of Our Lessons Learned? The number one goal is to be a household name in a national organization. I want OLL to be everywhere, just like JetBlue is. I want <laughs> OL to be a household name. I want to help as many people as possible. You're never walking alone. We're walking with you on the journey. And it's a healing journey. We're going to help you heal together as a family as we support you. All right. Well, thank you so much. I oh, you're really welcome. I really appreciate your time and all thank the work that you Thank you so doing. much. We Very are just honored to be a part of this uh, community and help. And it's so needed. Yes, definitely. It is so And thank you for reaching out and, you know, having a heart for social justice. If you're enjoying this show, please subscribe to our channel and follow our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter accounts.